This topic, I never thought this would happen to me. But I remember when it did, but more importantly, I remember exactly how it felt. It all started when I was running for governor of Texas in one of those war room sessions. For those of you who don't know, the war room is where the core campaign team comes together. We vet all the dirt, we dish out everything. Only the strongest opinions are aired, and brutal honesty is the norm. You have to be able to take it. In this particular war room session, I was preparing to introduce an immigration policy that I was proposing. And this immigration policy, I knew it was going to be controversial because I was proposing to give dignity and hope to immigrants in Texas. And if you may, as you may know, this is very defiant of the status quo and also extremely unconventional for our state and our political party. So I was prepared for the pushback, and I knew I was coming in also balancing a good blend of logic and humanity. So just as I'm getting ready to talk, I did raise my voice because I got excited. I started to lean in. I was really intense. I used my hands. I spoke with fervor because I was passionate. I wanted my team to know these words had a mission. Just as I was cresting to my most important point, I get the... One of my main guys, one that I love the most, I even nicknamed him Tyrone. You know, he's white, but I called him Tyrone. <laughs> he's my man. He said, Lisa, whoa, you need to back off. You look like the angry black woman. And I'm going to tell you, a heat hit my throat. And in my mind, I was thinking, oh, no, you didn't call me that. But then I said, because wouldn't that make his point? But I called on my ability to keep a cool head, and I said, oh, you would be silly. I don't look like that. Just, let's just get back on topic. But the truth is, once he hit me with that label, the tables completely turned. It was no longer about this wonderful, game-changing policy on immigration, but it became about how I could, under no circumstances, in any shape or form, be seen on the campaign trail as the angry black woman. The media would, they would just, you know, lose all credibility with the media and in the campaign, and they would lose respect for me. So in order to regain ground, I felt compelled to back off, listen to them, and take their cues on the right way to earn this credibility back. But I'm going to be honest with you. I got a little angry for not being able to show the passion I intended to show. More than that, not to discuss this immigration policy. And it left me tight-lipped and frustrated and thinking, why? Why does it always have to be anger? We can trace the notion of the angry black woman to the Amos and Andy show more than 60 years ago with Sapphire. Sapphire was the neck-snapping, finger-waving, husband-emasculating wife of Andy. Since Sapphire, characters have proliferated through television and media, giving us Esther from Sanford and Son to Tyler Perry's Medea. But who is she really today to us? The truth is that no matter your education level, how you look, what you have done in your life, you are likely going to be hit with this moniker if you're a successful black woman who steps outside of common arenas in your life. And yet we know that the angry black woman is a stereotype that fits across racial and gender lines. My personal favorite of this, Donald Trump. <laughs> Donald Trump. He gets us from the hair woes, <laughs> the pooched out lips, and his hands, and just, he's, he's going to say, you, you know, you're fired. <laughs> Donald Trump gets to be the angry black woman <laughs> with great success. We don't see him as angry. We see him as a successful leader in his industry. I read once that Steve Jobs once responded to an overeager college journalist who was persisting for an interview, and they were just starting out, he gave her three words. He said, leave us alone. Now, I don't know about you ladies, but when a nice, sweet college journalist persists before any writer, like, oh, I'm so sorry, I don't have time. How about, you know, in two more years? But he wrote, leave us alone. We don't do that because we'd be afraid we'd be called something that rhymes with stitch or angry. <laughs> But Jobs, known for his explosive personality, is even credited with his creativity and thinking out of the box for his angry personality. 
That's what I want to be. When is the last time you've heard an assertive white male in a leadership position be labeled as angry? Eccentric, perhaps. Oh, okay. Maybe uh, rude, but never angry. But there are exceptions I wanted to share with. I just couldn't let this go. Bravo to these three men who came up in my Google image search for the angry black woman. We got us some 50 cent. Or did I just lose credibility there because you really have to call him Fitty? But all jokes aside, no woman and certainly not any black woman can risk being seen as the angry black woman. Nothing scares us more, seriously, than being perceived under these terms. One of the first things our first lady had to contend with when she came onto the scene is to defend herself against this stereotype. Recently, she gave a speech at Tuskegee College where she was candid about the pressure she faced being the first African-American first lady. What would she wear? It was too young. What would she wear? She looks too old. She talked candidly about how it felt to see herself depicted in that afro with the machine gun and how the little innocent fist bump that we all do, just trying to be like the kids, got hailed as a terrorist fist jab by the media. She was so candid about the fine line that black women in the Lime Walk walk between respect and ridicule. It was really her experience growing up black in America. But critics immediately pushed back on this speech. They said it was negative, it was trite, and what else? Angry. They even went so far as to accuse the First Lady of playing the race card. And it doesn't stop there, but the good thing though is where, and this is the important part of this, is where her critics saw anger, the students in her audience saw that she was speaking truth and passion. But it doesn't just stop here with the political rhetoric and divisiveness. The angry black woman sapphire still haunts us in television and media, even though the roles and characters for black women have been elevated, including the elevation of their writers. Shonda Rhimes. Many of us might be familiar with her work. She's the brilliant writer and storyteller behind some of the biggest shows on TV right now. Grey's Anatomy, Scandal, How to Get Away with Murder. Miss Rhymes and her lead actresses and the characters themselves are educated, strong, successful women earning their success in the male-dominated arena. And yet, just recently, a New York Times columnist decided that the lead characters in Rhymes' shows was cast in Rhymes' own image as the angry black woman. Interestingly enough, where this journalist again saw anger in all of these women's characters, the viewers and fans of Miss Rhymes see strong representation of black women and voices where they have leadership and dominance that have been a long time coming. They don't see anger, they see assertiveness. And this is why this distinction, this distinction between anger and assertiveness, anger and audacity, anger and passion is so important. Our world is missing out on the wealth of knowledge and experience of black women. Women who know how to stretch a dollar. Women who know how to talk and market to other women. Women who know what it's like to continue to hold your head up high even when your soul is downcast. These are management and leadership skills that organizations in our society needs. I always find it interesting how we marvel and raise up successful black men who attribute a lot of their success to being raised by a single black woman. And we do this without considering all of the leadership, management, and skills and diplomacy this woman must have had to do this on her own. And too, without considering all of the things that must have indeed made her angry, but angry <laughs> enough to do better for herself and her family. Because you see where Anger may have been the catalyst. Love was the reason. But this stereotype is dangerous to us as a society because women, black women especially, remain silent across several core industries because of this stereotype. From technology, finance, engineering, elected leadership positions in government, and the list goes on, oil and gas. Black women remain silent, maybe not even because they don't speak up, but because they aren't even there in the first place. 
Black women make up 3% of board seats at Fortune 500 companies. Ursula Burns, you thought three was bad? One. She is the only black female chief at a Fortune 500 company. We need the power and the empowerment to have the passion, the pluck, and candor of Donald Trump without being seen as angry and without people thinking we've lost our ability to be rational and have lowered our IQ. I just put that in there because the French Open's on. I love Serena. And I thought, you know, why not? I want the freedom to be the angry black woman. You know, originally when I wrote this talk and thought about it, I was going to change the A to something we could all get excited about, you know, and make it the assertive black woman, the ambitious black woman, <laughs> audacious black woman. But then I thought, wouldn't that be setting the bar too low? We can do better, right, than to relabel a stereotype. Because the idea is not for us to redefine the proper way for a woman or any black woman to conform so that society can see her value and understand who she is. The idea is for all of us to see our human connectedness in this stereotype, to see one another in each other's stereotypes, and to think differently about what it means to be female and angry, or the relationship between gender and race and anger. And to all remember that anger is like every emotion. It's varying. There's varying degrees of anger. We all get angry sometimes, like happiness, joy, awe, wonder, and sadness. It's appropriate at the right time and in the right context. You'll be happy to know if you've gotten angry recently, like I probably have, that Christy Mata, a behavioral therapist, says that anger has its upsides. Anger informs us when things matter to us, helps us break down stereotypes, helps us to stand up for ourselves and other people and right wrongs. And that's the truth about anger and the angry black woman that we need to accept and think about. Let me tell you who the angry black woman really is. She's awesome. She's awesome because she's likely had to uphill climb her whole life to get to where she is today. And it's that uphill journey that has given her the resolve to f and fuel for her dedication. She's dedicated. She takes up causes that many of us don't realize and informs us what can matter, and what's important in the world. She's real. She will tell you the truth. And there's there a neck roll? There might be a neck roll, but there's nothing wrong with that. You can handle a neck roll. And she's a doer. This is a woman who gets things done and who's not content with the status quo. I want the freedom to be the angry black woman because I look at where we would be without all the angry black women who've come before us who put progress over posture. The angry black woman is an essential voice to us as we speak up and out, break down barriers, and push humanity forward. Not him. When I am tempted to back down, speak more softly, or grin and bear it and just move along, I think about what they've done. I think about how they saw a situation that made them angry, and they took a stand that we're all grateful for today. They didn't take an angry stand, but a passionate one. Because again, where anger may have been the catalyst, Love was the reason. So when I think about that, I don't back down, but I give myself, I say, sister, no, you don't have time for that. You have to rise up. And I rise. Thank you, Harriet Tubman. Thank you, Rosa Parks. Thank you, Michelle Obama. Thank you, Shonda Rhimes. Thank you, Condoleezza Rice and Oprah. <laughs> I don't know how you can thank a successful black woman without thanking a woman, you know, a billionaire like her. But I say thank you because I want the freedom to be just like them, like all of them. Because now I realize that in that war room when they called me the angry black woman, I shouldn't have been insulted, no. I should have been proud. Because where anger was the catalyst, love is the reason. 
Thank you so much.